full evaluation of a lower cervical segment. The lower cervical spine consists of the inferior aspect of C2 all the way through C7. To that end, you've done a general scan. You felt an area that needs further evaluation. So I'm going to stop. When we did a general scan in the lower the thoracic spine and the lumbar spine, we used a broader contact. Because it was a broader contact, we covered multiple segments. So in essence, we had to go into that area and we had to find the one that was most restricted. In the cervical spine, since we're going segment by segment, that's not necessarily the case. So as I'm palpating him, I find an area that needs further evaluation. I can stop there. For confirmation, I'm going to take my finger and place it in that inner spinal space and done what we've done so far throughout the rest of the spine. For a full evaluation of the lower cervical segment, I'm going to look at flexion and extension, right and left rotation, right and left lateral bending. For flexion and extension, I'll be using the head. The thing about when you flex them is don't flex them too much because the ligamentum nuchae will tent up and basically push you off that inner spinous space. So I'm looking for when I flex them, I should feel that segment open. And when I extend them, I should feel that segment close. If I do not feel them open up or I do not feel them close them down any further, I can say that, in other words, I have a flexion restriction or in the gonstant listening system, it be the P, the spinous is not posterior. To assess rotation, I'm going to look at two things as we always do, joint play and end feel. Joint play is the freedom of movement between two segments. In this case, I can either use one of two places. For joint play, I can keep my finger in that inner spinous space. Or two, I can come to the lateral aspect of the spinuses, just like we did in the thoracic and lumbar spine, where I can feel the superior spinous and the inferior spinous. For joint play, either or allowed, it's whatever you feel most comfortable with. For our intents and purposes, I'll be using the inner spinous space. To assess left rotation, I'm going to take my other hand, my indifferent hand, and rotate his head to the left. I should feel the spinuses, independent movement between the two spinuses, which I do, so his joint play is normal. To assess end feel, I'm going to bring the joint to pretension, taking the slack out of it, and whatever motion that I want to assess, in this case left rotation. And then I'm going to lightly spring through the joint as if I'm stretching a rubber band to feel the quality of the resilience or lack of resilience in that joint. For end play and rotation, to be consistent with the rest of the spine, I'm going to use the lateral aspect of the spinous process. To that end, I'm going to come just anterior to the trap and push medially into that spinous. And then I'm going to spring from lateral to medial. To assess right rotation, for joint play, I'm going to keep my finger in that inner spinous space and rotate his head, this time to the right. For end feel, I'm going to take my thumb, place it on the lateral aspect of that spinous process, and spring from lateral to medial. For lateral bending, just as with the rest of the spine, I can either keep for joint play my finger on the inner, the inner spinous spaces I have in the midline, or if I wanted to, I could come over to the lateral aspect of the spinous, just like we did in every area of the spine. I'm going to use the inner spinous space. So that's joint play. I'm passively going to laterally bend his head, feeling for independent movement between the two spinous processes. This is joint play and left lateral bending. He has more joint play in left lateral bending than he has in right. To assess end feel, just like in the thoracic and lumbar spine, my segmental contact point is going to be the lateral aspect of the spinous process on one spine on the one below. The only difference you have to be watch out for in the cervical spine is, in the thoracic spine, the spine was stabilized by the rib cage. In the lumbar spine, the spine is stabilized by the mass of the lumbar spine. The cervical spine doesn't have that, so our hand has to be a little bit more active, our contact hand. It has to become a little bit more of a fulcrum. 
So to that end, it's like a counterforce. My segmental contact point for lateral bending and field testing is the lateral aspect of that spinous process. But I want my hand to be a fulcrum, so in essence, everything bends around it. One thing to watch out for if you're looking, this is an example of my hand not being a very good fulcrum. You'll notice when he loudly bends his head, my hand, just, my thumb just drifts with him. I want this, in essence, if you were to bend a stick over your knee. Your knee doesn't give. Well, neither does my hand contact. So, in essence, I'm going to put a little bit of pressure into that spinous, such that when I laterally bend his head over my contact, my thumb gives no ground. It provides itself a good fulcrum. I'm going to bring the joint to pretension, and then lightly spring from lateral to medial feeling of resiliency or lack of resilience, in that case, left lateral bending. And now, right lateral bending. So that would be a full evaluation of a lower cervical segment. Flexion and extension, right and left rotation, right and left lateral bending, both end play and joint play.